A number of countries, including China, have voiced alarm about the impact of the dam disaster. We are deeply concerned about the resulting humanitarian, economic, and ecological impacts, and we call on all parties to the conflict to abide by international humanitarian law, do their best to protect the safety of civilians and civilian facilities. Yuval Weber joins me now, who's an expert on Russian military and political strategy and a research assistant professor at Texas A&M's Bush School of Government and Public Service here in Washington. Yuval, welcome to the program. I know you know the story well. Each side blames the other with conflicting accounts on what really happened with the destruction of this dam. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey has called for an a comprehensive investigation in a way that leaves no room for suspicion. He apparently spoke to the presidents of both countries. How likely is it that we're going to see an unbiased, independent investigation? Will we really ever know who was behind this? So uh, the, the word unbiased, people have a work there. And there seems to be some sort of feedback. Uh, Let's try again. Take your time. So, Thank yes. So there seems to be, as part of the, I guess, technical issue has been fixed. So it's uh, really difficult to figure out what's going to happen um, in terms of investigations because this is part of an active war zone. Um, at, although the fighting is taking place from obviously the, the south of Ukraine all the way into Belgorod into Russia, which, you know, for viewers, this is a distance of about 580 kilometers, which is roughly the distance from, let's say, Washington, D.C., where we're located, to, let's say, Providence, Rhode Island, or Columbus, Ohio. So it's quite a big distance that we're uh, looking at right now. But in terms of what happened, it seems that the consensus is emerging, is that there was explosives inside the dam itself, and that these went off basically without any warning. So if it was perhaps the Russians who basically mined the dam in case of potential attack, perhaps it just went off early. Uh, the result for this is that this is going to be um, an ecological, agricultural, and basically human disaster for the entire region for years, if not a decade plus to come, just because so much of that area from Nova Kachovka all the way through Kherson and to the sea uh, effectively will be flooded out and of relatively little use for um, economic potential or for humans living there. Wow, Yuval, I mean, the pictures we're looking at are just heartbreaking. So much is underwater. Uh, the European Union has uh, mobilized a massive uh, effort to get much needed supplies uh, to this region. Uh, how, um, I mean, as you mentioned, this is near uh, the front, uh, front lines of battle. So how is that going to co complicate things in terms of getting supplies and aid to those communities who need it the most? So at best, um, you know, as I said, the fighting is happening in lots of different places and Ukraine's counteroffensive is, is happening as we speak. So perhaps, you know, it's related to that in terms of maybe the local commanders, uh, you know, because Russia was in control of the actual dam, um, that, you know, the control buildings in there. So perhaps someone just got nervous, basically set something off a little bit too early. But in terms of providing support, um, there have been videos on both sides, you know, from both Ukrainian and Russian telegram channels, like online, in which the Russians are airlifting their troops out. And at the same time, the uh, Ukrainian emergency services are, in fact, for example, using drones to drop bottled water onto the people who have effectively been trapped in their homes and are on their roofs uh, begging for assistance. So what we're seeing from the Ukrainian side is they're trying to send, you know, small boats, pontoons, things of that nature to try and rescue people and animals uh, from the area and get them to drier land further west. Yuval, do you think this will have any impact on Ukraine's uh, much talked about counteroffensive? Uh, so it, at, uh, directly probably little because uh, Ukraine was unlikely to try and cross basically like the Dnipro River at that area just because Russia had fortified that quite a lot. Um, what we've seen from basically the first of reports of fighting is that, you know, there are Ukrainian-backed forces, which are still controlling large, you know, large parts of like the, the border region uh, between the, the area between Kharkiv and Belgorod. Uh, the Ukrainians are going um, against uh, Donetsk area. Uh, they're recapturing parts of Bakhmut. And they're really going in the direction of uh, Mariupol, but especially Melitopol. 
These are all areas that are north. In a certain sense, this will allow Russia to basically not have to think about defending this area that's now being flooded, but ultimately this is going to make uh, the, the defense of Crimea uh, that much more difficult if they do in fact uh, remove troops in order to attend to fighting elsewhere. And altogether, the counteroffensive is essentially starting up right now. It's going to last for days, if not weeks. So there's going to be fighting all across this area in eastern Ukraine until we get some sort of resolution as to which side is going to prevail. All right. We'll leave it there. Yuval Weber, thank you very much.